this is SK Ghosh. I would like to welcome you to our web seminar today. The topic, as you see, is frequently misunderstood seismic revisions of AC 710. The first thing is what I already indicated. All sections referenced are from AC 710, unless otherwise noted. So there are a couple of places where you will see AC 716 referenced, and, and I have put it in a different color so that it will stand out. Okay. If I have made no such indication, then things are exactly the same between AC 710 and AC 716. There may be an occasional section number change or something, but, but nothing of substance has changed, I can assure you. The very first topic uh, we chose is this uh, rigid versus flexible diaphragm. This topic tends to be, not tends to be, is important because if the, the importance is in figuring out how <laughs> Well, when, when uh, horizontal forces are imparted to a structure due to wind or earthquakes or whatever, and you have multiple uh, lateral force resisting elements, you have a couple of frames, you have three shear walls in the direction of the load. How is the load shared among those resisting elements? that the answer to that question depends on whether the diaphragm is rigid or flexible. If the diaphragm is rigid, then seismic story shear, and, and, and we will uh, uh, talk about what, what seismic story shear means uh, fairly soon, is to be distributed to vertical elements of the seismic force resisting system based on the relative lateral stiffnesses of those elements. And I'll, I'll show you a little example in a second. If the diaphragm is flexible, on the other hand, seismic story shear is to be distributed to the vertical elements based on tributary areas, not based on relative lateral stiffnesses anymore. So this is, this is how the flexibility of the diaphragm makes a huge difference. So to give you a very uh, uh, simple example, this is a diaphragm subject, let us say, to, to lateral forces due to earthquakes. The diaphragm is supported by three shear walls, and, and we are indicating that the three shear walls are of the same lateral stiffness K. If the lateral stiffnesses of the three shear walls are the same, and if the diaphragm is rigid, then the total lateral force would be distributed to the three shear walls in proportion to their relative lateral rigidities. Each shear wall having the same lateral rigidity, one third of the total load will go to each shear wall. Okay, so, so the three shear walls are of the same lateral stiffness, each will get one third because we have three shear walls. If the diaphragm on the other hand is flexible, the distribution of WL, the total lateral force will be in proportion to the tributary areas. So the middle wall will get one half of the total force and the end walls will get only a quarter that the middle wall obviously has twice the tributary area of the end walls. Now, uh, that brings up the important question, how do we figure out whether our uh, diaphragm is rigid or flexible? Now, 2012 IBC, I'm deliberately going back to the 2012 edition. This is the only time in the seminar that I'll do that. 2012 IBC in section 202, which is where I, where terms are defined, had definitions for flexible diaphragms and rigid diaphragms. Okay, so IBC had definition in section 202. The definition for a flexible diaphragm in section 202 of 2012 IBC was 
A diaphragm is flexible for the purpose of distribution of story shear and torsional moment, where so indicated in section such and such of ASC 7. So, so the code, in other words, referred to ASC 7. It, it said a flexible diaphragm is a diaphragm that ASC 7 defines as flexible.